Hello guys, my name is Balkrishan Shivastav and welcome to Code with PK. So in this video, we write a Java program to write rotate array elements. So before we begin, it is a request that if you like this video, if you find this helpful, please, 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 please do subscribe to my channel because your subscription is very important for me on YouTube. And out of 100 viewers, only one is subscribed. So please, 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 please do subscribe to my channel. So let's begin. So I have to write rotate array elements. So I'm going to take an integer array, say a equal to 16, 7. Okay. This has six elements. So length of this array is six. Given this array and given a value of n, say in this case 2, I have to rotate, right rotate the array elements two times. Okay. So when the elements of this array are right rotated twice, each element shifts right by two indices. Okay. So if we have, okay, this as the rotated array. Okay. So 16 goes to two positions after. So it comes here, 10 comes here, 8 comes here, 21 comes here. All right. 14 also skips two positions, but since it will go out of the boundary of the array, it goes to this position. And similarly, 7 goes two places forward to come at the second index in the array. Okay. So given indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the original array, we have these indices in the okay. All right. Okay. So given an array and a value of n, which is 2 in this case, you have to rotate, right rotate the array elements n times. Okay. And print the updated array. Okay. So this is our original array. This is our rotated array. And if in some way we can find the relation between the indices, that is, if I can find how 16 went from 0 to 2, how 10 went from 1 to 3 and so on, I will be able to find this rotated array. Okay. So if I take i, okay, which is the indices in the original array, okay. So for array of length 6, I have indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. And for n equal to 2, the values at these indices go from i to i plus 2, okay. So the value at index 0 goes to 2, value at index 1 goes to 3, values, value at index 2 goes to 4, Similarly, three value index three goes to five, value index four goes to six, five goes to seven. Okay, these are valid indices, but these indices are out of bounds because for an array of six locations, you have zero to five indices only. Okay, so how to find the new index for the values at these indices? That is, when you do i plus two, they go out of bounds. We do percent l. Okay, to i plus two. So this becomes 6% L, which is the length of this array 6 is 0. This becomes 7% 6, which is 1. So the value which was at index 4 in the original array goes to index 0 in the rotated array. So 14 was at index 4 in the original array goes to index 0 in the rotated array. Similarly, the value at index 5 goes to index 1 in the rotated array. Value at index 5 was 7. 7 goes to index 1. All right. And that is how we are able to move all the values from their original indices to the to their indices in the rotated array. So in this method, we are creating a new array, okay, that stores the elements rotated from the original array, okay. So in this case, we have an extra array. We'll also see a case where we rotate in place, where we don't have this extra array and we have to perform rotations in place within this array, okay, all right. So let me write the code for this and then we move on to that case, all right. So I'm going to write a function int, okay, rotate, right. Okay, and the return value is an integer array because this takes the array a, okay, and an integer n, okay. The returned array is the array with the values rotated n times in this a, okay. So for this case, if you get input a, you have to return this array, okay. That's why the return type is an integer array, okay. So we know from this method that the values at these indices in the original array go to these indices in the rotated array. So we create the rotated array first, we say int r a is equal to new int how many locations exactly the same number of locations as in the original array so i say a dot length okay and then we iterate this original array to get all these indices so we say for int i equal to 0 i less than a dot length 
i plus plus okay right if we say this is j that is the index where the value i goes into the rotated array is index j so i am going to say int j is i plus 2 and in the case j is out of bounds that is it is greater than the largest index you can do j percent the length of the array okay all right so if j is greater than a dot length minus 1 we do j is j percent a dot length okay all right okay if j is greater than sorry if j is greater than the largest index okay in this array all right so if j is greater than the largest index we do j j percent a dot length and then we set the value at the j index in the rotated array okay is the value at the i index in the original array and finally we return the rotated array okay so this is the code to rotate an array a n times right okay right rotated array a n times return the updated array all right and you really don't need this condition okay okay you can directly directly do this this is because if I do all these values percent L. Okay. If I do all these values percent L, they are going to remain the same. So if I say 2 percent 6 is going to be 2, 3 percent 6 is going to be 3, 4 percent 6 is going to be 4, and 5 percent 6 is going to be 5. Alright. So again, you can directly do this. The performance does not change, does not matter. Okay. All this is constant time operations, so you can do this. Okay, you don't need the if condition. All right. Now, what if n is a large value? Suppose say n is ten. Okay. How do we handle that case? For example, if we have ten, and if we follow this method, okay. So I have original indices as these, and this is going to be i plus ten because n is ten in this case. So this is going to be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, and then we do percent a dot length. So 10% 6, 11% 6, 12% 6, 13% 6, 15% 6, 16% 6. Okay, 10% 6 comes out to be 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3. So the value which was at index 0 goes to index 4. The value which was at index 1 goes to index 5. Similarly, value at index 2 goes to 0, 3 goes to 1, index 4 goes to index 2 and index 5 goes to index 3. Okay, and this is because rotating this array right 10 times is the same as rotating this array right 4 times okay because when you do i plus 4 okay when you do i plus 4 for n equal to 4 0 plus 4 1 plus 4 plus 2 plus 4 6 3 plus 4 7 4 plus 4 8 5 plus 4 9 okay and then you do 4 percent 6 5 percent 6 and 9 percent 6 all right so 4 percent 6 is 4 5% 6 is 5, 6% 6 is 0, 7% 6 is 1, 8% 6 is 2, 9% 6 is 3. Alright? So n equal to 10 will have the same output as n equal to 4. This is because when n equal to 6, okay, when you do n equal to 6, alright, the values are going to be for n equal to 6, uh, i plus 6, so we have uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, and then we do per, when you do percent six to all of these becomes zero percent six percent six percent six percent six percent six becomes one two three four and five. That is to say, when you rotate an array right equal to the length of this, okay, and equal to the length, so it goes back to the original state. Okay, all right. So n equal to four is basically n equal to six plus n equal to four. Okay, so n equal to six will give you the original array. So this is basically equal to n equal to 4, okay, which is this, all right, okay. The idea to tell this is that even if the value of n is very large, this code will be able to handle, okay, all the large values of n, okay. You can do, or you can, in starting, you can do n equal to n percent a dot length, okay. This is going to work out the same. So if you have, say, n equal to 10, okay, so 10 percent 6 is going to be 4, right. So we are going to do, okay, 10 percent 6 is 4. So when you input 10, okay, it gives you an equal, uh, equivalent rotation for n equal to 4. Okay, so this was the code to rotate array A 
n times right okay and return the new array which is the rotated array okay so now is here method where we rotate right a in place okay we don't use an extra array and we rotate a itself right n times okay let's see how we do that so in this case we have to rotate in place okay that is this a should become this okay and we don't have any extra array okay so the idea behind this is that we rotate we right rotate this array once okay we write the code to right rotate this array once and then we call that code n times so that the array gets rotated n times okay so if i have a as this okay so this has six locations 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay values are 16 10 8 21 14 and 7 and this is my a if i rotate it right once it should be all the values are shifted right okay by one index 16 comes here 10 comes here 8 comes here 21 comes here 14 comes here and 7 goes to the first index all right and these are the indices for this array and now a becomes this so this is basically rotate right once okay so for n equal to 2 we have to rotate these elements twice so once we have already rotated and we rotate these once right again okay so this comes here 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 and the value at the last index goes to the first index okay and this is your a now and this is also rotate right once okay so this array that you get after two single rotations is the same that we expect okay and this is what we put so how are we performing a single right rotation we start from this second index go till the last index okay and for each index that we traverse we say a i is a i minus one okay for all i greater than zero and i less than a dot length okay or you can say i greater than equal to one all right this is what we do the first thing we start from the second index which is index one okay and go to the last index for each index you do this value is the value at the previous index this value is the value at the previous index and so on till the last index okay before we begin let's make this point two before we begin we make sure we save the value at the last index because when this last index sets its value to its previous index we will lose this last value okay so we say temp is a of a dot length minus and then we do a i equal to i minus one from index one till last index and finally okay we set the value at the first index which was at the last index so we say a of zero is okay and this single rotation is basically these three steps and that is what we code okay so i'm going to say void rotate right takes an array a okay so this function is going to rotate this array in place one step right okay and then i'm going to call this function n times to do n right rotations okay so the first step is to save the last value so i say in temp is a of a dot length minus one all right then we do this for all values of i greater than or equal to one and less than the length till the last index you do a i equal to a i minus one so i do for int i equal to one i is less than a dot length i plus plus okay all right and then we do a i equal to a i minus one the problem here is if i start from index one till the last index and I do a equal to a i minus one. One, let's see what happens. So if I have this, okay, 14, 7, 16, 10, 8, 21. Okay. Suppose I do this on this array from i equal to 1 to this. Okay. So first step will be a of 1 equal to a of 1 minus 1 is equal to a of 0. Right? So a of 1 equal to a of 0, a of 1 becomes a of 0, so a of 1 becomes 14. Okay, then we do i plus plus, okay, i was here, i was here. 
we were starting from 1, we went to 2, okay? We do this again. We do this again. We do a of i, which is a of 2, is equals to a of 2 minus 1, which is 1, okay? So a of 2 becomes a of 1. So a of 2 also becomes 14. Similarly, when we move forward with the next value of i, and we do a of 3 equal to a of 2, right? a of 3 also becomes 14, all right? So this idea is correct. Okay, but this iteration has to be in the reverse order. That is, you have to iterate from last index to first. All right. Now, if you do this same thing, okay. So I had 14, 7, 16, 10, 8, 21. All right. And I have to cover these indices. Okay. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. So I traverse from 5 to 1. And I do a equal to a i minus 1. Okay, so i starts here. Okay, so I'll start with a dot length. Okay, i greater than equal to 1, i minus minus. All right, and then I do this. So i starts here. I do a i, which is a 5, is a i minus 1, which is a 4. Okay, so a 5 is a 4. A 5 is a 4. So a 5 is 8. Okay, and then you do i minus minus. So i comes. Then you do this again, a i equal to a i minus 1, a 4 is a 3, okay? So a 4 is a 3, so a 4 is 10, okay? i minus minus, i comes here. You do a 3 is equal to a 2, okay? a 3 equal to a 2, a 3 is now 16, okay? Do i minus minus, i comes here. Then you do a 2 equal to a 1, okay? a 2 equal to a 1, so this becomes 7, okay? i minus minus i comes here then you do a1 is a0 okay so a1 is a0 so 14 comes here okay so when we traverse this from a dot length minus 1 to 1 that is when we get our desired effect otherwise we will get this which is wrong we don't want this okay so we do a i equal to a i minus 1 okay all right and then finally, we save the last value that we saved into the first location. So a0 is 10. Okay. Right. And this is your function to rotate right this array a in place once. Now, as I told you, in order to have n rotations, n right rotations, we call this function n times. So we say void right rotate. Okay. Takes the integer a, integer array a, sorry, and an integer n. Okay, to rotate this array a in place n times, right? Okay, so all you need to do is call this function n times. So what we do is for int i equal to zero, i less than m, i plus plus, and we do call rotate right and pass a. All right. So this function rotates this array in place right n times. And I mean I did not show this complete thing here. So temp is a of a dot length minus 1. So temp has to save, save the last value. So in that, in this case, temp would be 21. Okay, because this was the last value here. Okay. And you finally do a0 to temp. So you finally set a0 to 10. Okay. So this array rotates right once like this. Okay. All right. This was just to demonstrate that you don't iterate from left to right. You have to iterate from right to left to get the desired shift. Okay. Okay, one last thing again, as we discussed in the previous case, what is, what if n is greater than a dot length, we simply do n equal to n percent a dot length, just as we did in the previous case, so I do n equal to n percent a dot length, okay, alright, so this was the solution to this problem and I hope this was helpful and before we move on to running this on our system now, it is a request to please, 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 please subscribe to my channel and let's move on to running this on system now. So this is the code that we discussed, right? So this is the first method, rotate right one that takes an integer array a, int n. This method creates a new array which contains the rotated array and it returns the rotated array, okay? Then we have this right rotate method two that takes an array a, integer n, and it rotates a in place. We don't have an extra array in this case. This rotate right method calls this rotate right method n times, right? And this rotate right method takes the integer array a, rotates it right in place once, okay? So we call this n times. Then we have a helper method to print the array. Okay. In my main, I have an array A. 
I am rotating it right n times so n equal to 2 and since I am using rotate right 1 method it will create a new array which is the rotated array which I am showing in RA and my array A will remain unchanged okay so I print original array and then rotated array so let me run this Java C Java and all right so this is the original array this is rotated array two times so 16 has to shift right by 2 which is here 10 has to shift right by 2 which is here and so on so this is correct okay so let me change this n to say 4 okay java c java so 16 should go right 4 times so it comes here 10 has to go right 4 times it comes here and so on okay if i make it equal to the length of the array so it will become the original array after rotation so you see the rotated array is the same as the original array all right if i make it to a value which is greater than the length so if we make it more than the length of the array it basically is n is equal to n percent a dot length oh which i need to add here percent a dot length all right so basically it is effectively 4 because 10 percent 6 which is the length of the array is 4 so let me run this java c java so for n equal to 10 we have the same output as we had for n equal to 4 all right because 10 percent a dot length which is 6 10 percent 6 is going to be 4 all right let me test the second method so for second method i call right rotate 2 okay and since this is going to rotate array a in place a is going to change okay it won't remain the same so before rotating i print original array okay and after i call right rotate 2 it is going to change so i print rotated array now okay and this is going to be a and not r okay because we are rotating in place i'm going to add a system dot out dot print ln in between so that we can differentiate the two separate methods all right compile what is the value of n we have 10 let's go back to 2 and compile again sorry and run okay so for any n equal to 2 we have the same output making it 4 java c java for n equal to 4 we have the same output 16 goes right 4 10 goes right 4 times all right making it equal to a dot length okay both should be equal to the original array now which is the case and then finally making it to a value and greater than 10 let's make it 11 in this case which is rotating right 5 times 11 percent 6 is going to be 5 so 16 goes right 5 places 10 goes right 5 places so come in front and so on so this was the solution to this problem and i hope this was helpful so if you like this video if you found this helpful please 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 do subscribe to my channel and please mention in the comments if there was anything not clear to you in this video or if there's a concept you want me to discuss or if there's a question you want me to solve thank you